Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Catherine Rain. Thanks for being on the show, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. Catherine arrived in the U.S. with only $700 in her pocket and continues to stay driven by her desire to have a wonderful life with her family, to make a difference in the lives of her clients, and give back to the community. She and her team currently serve numerous locations in Florida, including Miami Beach and Fort Lauderdale. She became the number one single agent in Florida in 2018 and 2019 with Keller Williams and has a very strong commercial and pre-construction sales background. Catherine, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to this conversation and we're grateful for your time. Give the listeners and myself a little more about, you know, who you are and, and your, your superpower in, in, this, in this business. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I came to Miami about 10 years ago and I was an actress. I was a stand-up comedian and I kind of fell into this business um, by a friend who said to me, Catherine, you are so driven and you're good with numbers. I think you would be really good in real estate. And I just tried it and I loved it and I love numbers. So numbers is really my big, big strength. I look at very complex deals and I can tell you basically right away if it's a deal or not. And the people that work with me, they, they get very quickly a good feel of, of my strength. And they uh, are sometimes impressed that I don't even need a calculator to um, calculate return rates and to see if a property makes sense. So yeah, numbers is my great strength and my investors are very pleased uh, with getting good returns and making money on the deals. Being good with numbers is, is, is a very good skill to have in the real estate business. So. <laughs> yes, yes. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, you, you came as an actress and a, a comedian. It's, it's so interesting. But your friend seeing this, this skill that you had and thought that, oh, you know what? You know, this, this could be really useful over here in the real estate business. Mm -hmm. so tell me about that transition. You know, you, you know, was that scary at all? I mean, to jump into that yes. kind of business? Yeah, in the beginning, it was very scary. I had a little baby. He was like a newborn baby, almost like six months old. And in the beginning, I was doing it part time. I would, took sometimes the baby to showings. It was it was very stressful. But then piece by piece, I really uh, acquired really good clients that trusted me and that really felt that I cared. You know, I, I always went for all of my clients uh, the extra mile and I'm still going the extra mile for all of my clients. And there is this feeling um, when you work with someone that really cares and that you trust that you want to continue using that person and I'm that person for my clients. Mm -hmm. And that really uh, was uh, my strength besides being good at numbers that I showed my clients that I really cared. And once I did my very first deals, it just started coming in and I had a very natural uh, source of leads. It was all referrals or repeat customers and uh, it, it's been going ever since. Tell me about, you know, like your, your clients. You mentioned like different types of clients. I know, you know, and briefly before the show, we had talked a little bit about some people, maybe syndicators, operators, you know, that are syndicating deals and some may not be. Uh, but tell me the different types of clients and, and maybe then we'll talk about, you know, how they look at deals differently. Okay, so... Uh, since we also do uh, traditional residential real estate, we do have first-time home buyers, people that resell their homes. But there is always an opportunity with any client that we deal with that they also buy later on an investment property. Um, what we recently experienced a lot that we have now, that we have a lot of luxury residential listings, those people buy also investment properties for either their children as, a, as, a, a, as an investment. And now with the tax laws right now, they can basically um, give their children while they're still alive money without paying taxes on, on the gift, right? And uh, we have a lot of those. Um, those are very educated, very um, sophisticated clients that know their stuff. They're, they're business people. They own big businesses. So they know their numbers and um, they look at deals from a pure return perspective. 
and uh, you have to educate them a lot on the process on how the deal works they get scared after inspections so those are those are the people that have the money but they're not familiar with with real estate as far as investment on, on a large scale right we have those then we also have corporations that uh, have invested in real estate in the past and that are very real estate savvy and they want to get everything done right away and quick. We have those, they more look at, at a real estate investment from a standpoint of, okay, what's the rent multiplier? Uh, what's the cash on cash return? Or how much do I pay per door? And they will let you know very quickly. Um, they sometimes don't even look at properties. They, they just want to have the numbers and then they decide whether they even look at the properties versus the other ones that are um, affluent people that are looking to invest for their children. They look at properties and they ha still have emotions <laughs> attached to the properties. And uh, it, it, it's, it's two different uh, investors. And then we have, um, you know, families that own one property that want to buy their first, very first investment property. Obviously, those are the most emotional ones. And for those, we have to explain really um, in detail that they should not just look at, uh, how do you call it? Uh, it that you don't just judge it by the cover, right? Uh, right? It's not just the curb appeal. It's You also need to look, okay, this property sells for 500,000, brings you $3,000 income. This one sells for 550, but it brings you $6,000 income, but it's ugly but who cares, right? So um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, we're fortunate to work with all of those people and it's, each one has its challenges and uh, its uh, advantages and we, we just love to do that. Nice. So mm -hmm. obviously, you know, I'd like to focus a little on the, like the commercial buyers mm -hmm. or those corporations or companies mm -hmm. or the, uh, the people you're talking about buying the luxury homes mm -hmm. that are also buying investment property. Um, but, you know, as far as the, the operators that are listening and the, you know, they're wanting to work with somebody like yourself and, and like you mentioned, you know, building that trust. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we build trust and we, I know, you know, we've had uh, brokers that we've done different deals with, and then, you know, we, we want to sell the deal with, through them as well, you know, when, yeah. we, when it's that time and then, you know, and then we're working with them on, you know, to buy the next properties as well. So, you know, it is a, it's such a relationship business, but you know, could you elaborate on, on that relationship, how, you know, how have people built that relationship to you, to, with you and built that trust? And, and so you all just have a long-term relationship and, and you both benefit. Yes. Um, so it really depends uh, if it's an investor that holds the property for a long time. Basically when I meet someone for the first time, we first have to uh, find out what is their goal. Do they want to flip the property? How long do they want to hold it? Because if they only want to hold it for three to five years, I will recommend them buying something different than if their goal is to hold it for 10 years, right? So we need to make sure that we have the same goals. I always find it very important to have this first consultation and to listen to their needs. So that is step one. So if you don't do that and you just you know, show them whatever, it's, it's not going to be a good relationship because you're not going to deliver to the needs of the client. Um, and then I do have a lot of off market and pocket listings that I give to my investors first before they hit the market. So last year I sold a lot of multifamily properties in Cora Gables and the Cora Gables market is very hot. Like everything that hits the market moves really quickly. And I got to meet this one gentleman. He had worked with many other realtors in the past and he was really thrilled to work with me because he felt that I was doing things a little bit different, right? I uh, was uh, going out of my way, not like the uh, regular broker that doesn't work on weekends. I was meeting him weekends to sign paperwork. He's uh, old school. He likes to set, sign everything in person. There's no dot loop or doku sign with him. And uh, he uh, was impressed by how I did business old school. And I feel like although I'm a younger generation, I still like to do things face to face. And I feel with a lot of my investors, that is a, a huge value that I add that I try to see them face to face. And I try to meet with them at least four times a year, may it be like dinner, breakfast, lunch. And with some of my investors, I also do, this is something really uh, valuable that I do for my investors. And I don't know if other realtors do that. Um, I know I do it and I, I do it with pleasure. We do classes, landlord classes for our investors. 
And uh, the benefit of those landlord classes are I'm teaching them how to uh, do the lease with the tenants, how to advertise their properties so that they don't have to hire a real estate agent to pay a commission. If they don't want to deal with it and they are not successful, I always let them know they can come to me and I can take care of it. But I would really hate to charge them a commission. And at the same time, like rentals are a lot of work for me. I do them as a favor to the clients, but I would much more prefer for them to find their own tenants and not charge them a commission, right? Mm -hmm. So we add a huge value to our investors that way. And then we also teach them classes on how to calculate their return, how to uh, manage the properties. That saves them a lot of money into managing the properties uh, if they don't want to hire a property manager. And we add value like that to our clients. And then when we meet with them four times a year, we go over their whole portfolio and we uh, determine which properties bring a good return and which properties I would recommend them trading in for something different. And we do a 1031 exchange to find something that brings them a little bit of a higher return, especially if they have a lot of equity in one property and don't get a lot of return on it. Landlord classes, that's a, that's mm-hmm. a great uh, value that you're providing. Yeah you know, no doubt about it. And I can see mm-hmm. that, you know, building that trust and that relationship and, and you know, by providing that and giving and giving, giving back that way that people. Yeah, it, it's goes, it goes both ways because I mean, it's, it's a, a huge value for my clients. And uh, at the same time, it takes the, the effort away from me taking care of the rentals because it is a, a lot of work. Uh, yes, I get paid for it, but the, the rentals, we do it as a favor for the clients. But I always let them know I'm there for them. If, you know, I don't want them to go to another agent. So if they need help, I'm there for them and I'll take care of it. But I'd rather have them save the money. Sure. Mm -hmm. What's been some of the differences you've seen in those clients? Maybe that's made some of them more successful than others. Um, There's a lot of clients that uh, over improve the properties. And especially when you have working class uh, neighborhoods, uh, you cannot put a kitchen for $20,000. So sometimes I have to step in. When they do the renovations, I offer to visit and I I don't tell them, hey, I want to come to make sure you do everything right, right? I I just uh, offer to come by and check it out. How's the, I I always check in, how is it going? How's the process? I always offer help. I offer my vendors. I always have a a company for evictions. I have a company for inspections that I can recommend them, a painter. I want to be the resource of my buyers. I want to be the girl that they think of if they need something. And I'm not bothered by it. It's like, I don't want to not talk to them anymore once the deal has closed. I want to be their resource, right? So I love and they call me. And uh, so when I go on the construction zone and I see that they are spending a little bit too much, I mean, you can't put in a working class neighborhood the uh, marble countertops. You should go (laughs) with the cheap quartz, right? The nice quartz, but the one from China, not the one from Turkey. So um, there's a huge price difference. The one costs 400 per slab. The other one is 900. So you can save a lot of money. And they are sometimes so proud of the work they do. And I have to remind them in a nice way to not overdo it because it's not their house. (laughs) It's an investment property. You have to keep the emotions out of it, right? Yes, yes. And uh, strictly about the numbers. It's strictly about the numbers. So... The people that overspend, they are less successful. And the people that stay within their budget, they are more successful. Basically, if they listen to my advice, they will be doing really well. (laughs) Well, I was going to say that they either either have to know the market better so they know what the property can withstand, Mm -hmm. right? With the renovations and and with the rent that they can push, you know, but if they're not going to do that kind of research or or part of that research should at at least at minimum be asking you. (laughs) Yeah. you're You're the market expert. Yes. Uh, I, I always love it when they call me after. They're like, oh, no, 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 we're not done. We're not done. And then they call me in the end and then I walk in and the place looks like a palace. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's totally overimproved, but then it's too late. I don't want that to happen. Right. So, you know, tell me about, you know, how 
I don't know. I just say anything else that, that really causes a roadblock or to people because emotions are, are, are a big factor when buying real mm-hmm. estate, right? Especially, yes. you know, like that first time somebody's buying their first investment property yeah. or especially first home, but, but especially when we're talking about investment property, the first one, I mean, it's like oh, this pretty duplex or this pretty fourplex, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to keep the emotions out of it. Right. Yes, it is. I, I dealt uh, la- towards the end of last year. I had a, a fourplex in Cora Gables that I sold to a young gentleman. He was my age, and his parents uh, ha- own a large company, and the parents are older, so they wanted to pass some of their wealth uh, onto their son um, because of the uh, advantage, advantageous uh, tax laws. So uh, they offered to buy him that fourplex. It was around $800,000 and it was his first purchase. So he was extremely nervous. So it it was like uh, phone calls, uh, a lot of phone calls that I had with him to educate him on certain things. And um, it it came in very handy that I know a lot about construction. Uh, I'm a girl that is not afraid to get her hands dirty. So I've uh, been on many construction zones, walking around with hard hats. I know a lot about electrical system, plumbing system. I know how much things cost, right? I know how much windows cost, new plumbing, uh, why you have a crawl space and why a crawl space is better sometimes than just a a concrete slab. And uh, a lot of my investors appreciate that because I'm not just like someone that tells them something. I, I know a lot what's going on behind the walls. Let's put it like this. So I was able to calm him down and set the right expectations. So the property was a little bit run down, but that's why he got it for like 800,000 when it was worth 1.2. And uh, it, it was a lot of uh, calming down. And before the, ex- uh, before the inspection, I had to set the right expectations that this report is probably gonna show 100 to $150,000 in repairs, which then happened, but he was still nervous. And, you know, so uh, that's uh, how the process works with investors uh, that have done this many times. It's, it's a lot easier. You just tell them, look, I know the, uh, the, the electric system needs to be replaced. So that's going to be like in an inspection report that says 80,000. I know a guy that can do it for 40. Um, I'll connect you with him. They're like, okay, fine. Da, 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 da. Um, how much are we asking uh, after inspections? Well, the seller is already giving you a good price, maybe 10, 15,000. Okay, call the seller, 10, 15,000. Okay, okay, let's sign the addendum, right? It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier um, with investors that have done this many times. Help us to, uh, you know, for that listener who's like looking mm-hmm. for that first investment property, mm-hmm. help them to maybe speak the lingo a little better to maybe even come across as a little more experienced, but at least know that uh, some things that, the, give them some things they need to know when having that first conversation with you. Maybe after that first time they're together, you've, you've figured out their goals and their alignment, but what are some other things they need to know going into buying this investment property? So um, when you look at an investment property, you need to make a decision. First of all, I think what's most, most important, and I can tell you this, um, I own myself several investment properties the criteria that I always go after and there's investors that do it different, obviously. Right. But if you're a first time investor, my strong suggestion is that you go for a location Mm. because you can change a lot of things on a property. You can change the kitchen, you can change uh, the walls, you can (laughs) change the plumbing, the roof, but you can never change the location. So I always invested in prime location, a plus locations because those locations are um, recession proof, not recession proof, but they get harder hit in recessions and are the first to recover and they hold their value and the rents in prime locations are pretty stable and you have a lower vacancy rate. However, in prime location, the return is much lower. So if you're looking for a very high return, location might not be your best bet. I know people that don't mind to collect their rent with guns. I'm not that kind of person. I like to have, I I mean, it's every, everybody's different, right? I like to have nice tenants that pay their rent on time and that are sophisticated. I rather collect a higher rent payment, even though I don't have such a high return. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so my tenants that pay three to six thousand dollars a month, they are less likely to default on rent payments than a rental that produces a thousand dollar rental income a month. The other thing that I look for is 
Um, I like to have properties that are two bedrooms or larger because those are people that tend to stay longer than one bedroom or studio apartments and they're more stable tenants. And obviously what comes with location is also school district. Mm. So if you have a good school district with the property, the property will always rent very well. Um, there is a few other things that do you want me to go on? Yeah. There's maybe just give, give us one or two other points about the location specifically, how you determine, okay, this is a prime location. Okay. Um, so the school district, number one, um, I look at, uh, what businesses are close by. Are there, there, are there a couple of specific businesses that come to mind or is it, or is it just the maybe specific ones that are local to the area? Um, for, for example, I, I give you an example in Coconut Grove where I own the majority of my properties. Um, we, we are close to the water, yet the property, most of the properties don't require flood insurance because we're, we sit on one of the highest points in whole Miami, which is very, uh, like very good. And then uh, you have a lot of businesses there. There is, um, there is uh, an outdoor mall that's being completely redone right now. So those values are going to go up. And then there is an A-rated school district, an A-rated elementary school. So if you invest in an area like that, you really can't go wrong. All right. All right and I have, I, I have yeah. right now, there are actually a five-plex listed that, is, uh, that sits among like multi-million dollar properties. It's one of the few multifamily properties in the area. And uh, it, it's, it's a great property. So in, with a property like that, you really can't go wrong. So, Catherine, what's been the hardest part for you through this real estate journey or investing journey? For me, investing or, mm -hmm. or with my investors? Uh, with your investors. With my investors. Uh, it's the emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Where I really feel sometimes people should have gone for other deals that would have given them a better return. And they went with option B. And then later they came back to me and said, oh, we should have gone with option A. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I told you so, but it's too late now. But then about, the second time around, they listened to me better. What about you? What about the hardest part for you? Um, the hardest part for me sometimes is to, um, to compete. For example, I, have, I own a commercial property here in Coconut Grove that was a good deal when it came on the market. I wanted to buy it. And at that moment, because I have a lot of uh, things going on, at that time, I didn't have all the cash liquid. I had it in another property and I wanted to buy the property, but I pulled it off. I did a hard money loan. And by the time I had liquidated the other property, I refinanced that property. And four months later, it appraised for 50% more. So it was good. I took a risk. It cost me $25,000 in fees and in loan costs. But I had a quarter million dollars in equity four months later. So it is sometimes hard to pull it all together and to take a risk. You sometimes got to just hold your breath and hope for the best and take a risk. But um, no risk, no fun, right? And I definitely made the right decision. And I, and I competed against a lot of cash deals and I, and I got it because I put in a cash offer. Uh, it, it, it is sometimes hard to juggle things. And I was not born wealthy. I worked for everything that I have hard myself. I don't have a trust fund. I don't have rich parents. And that, that, that is sometimes challenging to compete with those people, but I'm building my own empire, pe empire awesome. piece by piece. And uh, yeah. And you said no, no trust or no, uh, what do you say? No risk, no fun. No risk, uh, but, no fun. Yeah. And I would say no risk and almost no gain as well. That is true. You're yeah, very so. right. Catherine, what's, what, what's a way that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Um, I, uh, I'm extremely relationship based and I even took it up another notch. So I'm very purposeful in who I meet and who I want to get together with. I have a little, I'm very old school in that sense. I do love technology, but I believe technology is only adding to our relationships mm -hmm. and not replacing it. So I have a, a notebook and I put business cards of people that I meet. I glue it in and I write notes and I go through it every single day. 
who do I want to meet? How do I follow up with those people? And this could be people that are totally outside of my industry. I want to meet with doctors. They have a lot of uh, extra income that they don't need, that they want to invest. I want to meet with lawyers, the same. They all just have their money in stock market because they don't know how it works. They're scared of real estate. So my mission is to educate as many people as possible that are affluent, that have extra income. And I want to give them an opportunity to multiply their wealth because they're missing out so much. It drives me crazy. I have they friends are. that have their money in the stock market and they don't even know how much more they could have if they just invested smart in real estate. And it drives me crazy because I see so many good deals and I'm working on educating people, bringing value to other people and meeting people face to face for mm-hmm. coffee, lunch and dinner. And that has really uh, taken my business to a different level. How are you finding those people or finding investors and those doctors and lawyers? Talking to people. I find one doctor, I say, hey, and then I follow up with him a few months later. I'm like, how do you like your tenant? How's it going for you? When are we ready to do the next deal? By the way, do you know anyone else that can benefit from my service? I invite them to the landlord classes. Then we do a lot of client events. Um, I meet a lot of people at open houses, believe it or not. A lot of people call on my listings, obviously. And I do meet a lot of people on LinkedIn as well. Okay. Just look outside of your industry. That's, that's uh, a great value for me. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Uh, I gave myself permission to shine. Mm. I like um, I, I, you know, in, in life, <clears throat> when I started this journey and I became successful, there was a lot of people that could not handle my success. So I had two choices. I could either stay where they are or shine brighter. And I knew I would lose some of the people. And some of those people stay behind, but some of them actually came with me. And I realized on that journey that by allowing myself to shine and being amazing, that I inspire so many other people. Mm. And that has really um, been my little success secret. And I have so many clients that are not in real estate that call me and that write me and that email me and that tell me how much I inspire them. And that makes me really, really happy. Nice. Tell us how you like to give back. I love to give back to the community. So I, uh, I'm very passionate about empowering kids and the youth. Um, with my kids, I do affirmations. There is one poem in specific. It's called, my God. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's a poem. Uh, it's, it's a poem by Mary Schmidt. And it's, uh, it's about um, giving yourself permission to shine, right? Mm. And uh, I read that with my kids. And when I go to my son's school once a year, I go for career day. I do something fun with the kids and I want them to know how much fun it is to invest in real estate and how much wealth this can bring them. And I think if kids know that at a young age, they will plan their life completely different. I wish I had known all of those things when I was younger because my parents, they didn't own real estate. I mean, we rented until I was uh, done with high school. They mm. owned back in the day, but then they lost it when the, when the recession hit in the 80s. So they were scared of owning. And I, we moved out of our house and we had no equity because we had rented. So I just wished more kids would know about the value of owning real estate. So I, that's my, one of the things I'm giving back. And then I'm teaching classes to teenagers and young adults. And um, it's, it's a very powerful class called Quantum Leap through KW. And it teaches them techniques on how to set goals and how to achieve those goals. And that is an extremely powerful class that I teach. In, and we do, we do many other things for charities, but those are the two things that I enjoy personally the most. Nice. Well, Catherine, thank you very much for your time. Unfortunately, we're out of time today, <laughs> uh, but tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Sure. Um, I have a website. It's called beautifulmiami.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Beautiful Miami Team, uh, on Facebook, Catherine Rain. I'm all over the place. You can Google me. There's videos from my TV show, YouTube channel, subscribe. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. 
LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.